In 2013, Martin Scorsese directed the hit film The Wolf of Wall Street. The Leonardo DiCaprio, Jonah Hill movie was a fun, decadent ride through the lives of the hustlers of Wall Street. Most scenes in the movie either depicted the stars figuring out ways to steal money or having insane parties with beautiful women. Often, they were doing both at the same time. What if we flipped the script, though? What if we saw a film where the beautiful women were hustling the Wall Street guys? That's the basic idea of Lorene Scafaria's 2019 film, Hustlers. Much like The Wolf of Wall Street, Hustlers is based on a real-life story. It's also a story where it can be hard to tell what's fiction and what is an outrageous truth. Who are the real women behind Hustlers? The movie begins with Constance Wu's Dorothy, who goes by her stage name Destiny, working at the strip club Scores. Things are not going very well for her. After an entire shift and having to share her money with the club, she barely has enough left for her and her grandmother. Everything changes when she sees Ramona dance. The dancer, portrayed by the amazing Jennifer Lopez, dazzles everyone with her skills and rakes in an impressive amount of cash. Destiny decides that she needs to learn from the best and asks Ramona for help. Graciously, Ramona decides to take the young woman under her wing, or giant fur coat rather. Ramona teaches Destiny her tricks, and the two team up on her clients. Within no time, Destiny starts getting much bigger paydays. The two live a glamorous life with big shopping sprees, handsome guys, and a surprise visit from Usher. Everything changes when Destiny gets pregnant and the stock market plummets. She moves in with her boyfriend and leaves the club life for a short while. Years later, once her relationship plummets, she tries to go back. Only things have changed. The club has gotten much sleazier, and she's not making the money she used to. That's when she meets up with Ramona and learns about her new hustle. Her and a few other girls go to bars and try to bring men into the club. They call this fishing. Once they have the guys, they slip something in their drinks that makes them happy, but also makes them black out. The scene in which they perfect the drug like they're baking a cake is one of the funniest in the whole movie. Once the guys are sufficiently loopy, they take the credit card and rack up a huge bill. Everyone gets paid, and no one gets arrested because the married men who admit to what happened to them. This leads to things getting even more glamorous until the whole thing starts spinning out of control. They end up getting caught, but Destiny betrays the others by taking a deal. She gives an interview for a magazine and seems to regret losing her friendship to Ramona, though it does look like she got to keep most of the money. Most of the film revolves around the personal life of Destiny. We actually learn quite a bit about her life story. Apparently, her parents abandoned her to live with her grandmother when she was young. Ramona claims in the interview that this led to a life of poverty and violence for Destiny before she got to the club. She also claims that the young woman wasn't just looking for money, but also for friendship. When she found that friendship with Ramona, the two were inseparable. Ramona introduced her to all of the other girls, and for a short while, she actually got a proper family. She used her money from the club to start taking classes again with Ramona's encouragement. Once she starts a family of her own, though, all that changes. Destiny distances herself from Ramona and the others, but that distance doesn't last for long. Motivated by taking care of her daughter, she gets a new family with Ramona's new crew. They celebrate holidays together, share triumphs and tragedies, and start a successful criminal enterprise. Isn't that what every family does, really? When things get out of hand, Destiny starts trying to separate from them again. This all culminates when she gives Ramona and the gang up to the cops. She made it in the end, but seems just as alone as she was at the start of the movie. The moral of the story is to never cross Jennifer Lopez, apparently. While Destiny is the main character, Ramona is in many ways the star. She's the George Clooney to Destiny's Brad Pitt. Sure, Destiny is a big part of the movie, but Ramona's the one who gets all the glamour. She's introduced in the movie's best scene. Jennifer Lopez definitely defies anyone who has ever said negative things about actresses over 50. She stunningly works the stage like a pro, practically demanding that the audience throws dollar bills at the movie screen. What's really incredible about her character is how sweet she is. You might think that the mastermind behind a plot to drug and rob people would be cruel, but that's far from the truth. 
She teaches Destiny how to make lots of money and how to spend it. We're also introduced to Ramona's daughter and her plans to run a small business. From the earliest moments of the film, she's shown to have true ambition and business acumen. That's what makes the stock market plummet so tragic for her. She goes from almost starting her own business to folding clothes for a retailer. Her experiences there lead her back to the club and into a life of well-paying crime. It's here where we start seeing her cracks begin to form. She's shown to be far too trusting of the new girl she recruits. One of them ends up turning on them just how Destiny predicted. Ramona also becomes more and more cruel with her selection of clients. Instead of always going for rich cheaters, she starts singling out lonely normal people. This ends up being her undoing as a normal guy has no problem reporting her to the cops. While Destiny is undoubtedly responsible for their friendship collapsing, Ramona is responsible for the business collapsing. Rarely do you see criminal enterprises fail because the ringleader was too trusting. That's pretty much the opposite of how Goodfellas ends. So where did the film get this outrageous story anyway? Well, the story behind the story begins with a woman named Jessica Pressler. She started her illustrious career as an editor for New York's blog, Daily Intel, in 2007. From there, started to write about corruption and greed surrounding New York's Wall Street culture, which really explains her character's lack of sympathy for the Wall Street guys who got hustled in the movie. She wrote articles about Goldman Sachs, AIG, and their roles in the 2008 financial crisis. Aside from that, she also did profiles of Lynn Tilton and Anthony Scaramucci. Pressler was doing pretty well for herself, but her article about strippers robbing Wall Street blind made her a huge name. The 2015 article, The Hustlers at Scores, was a huge hit. The piece was nominated for a National Magazine Award, and the film rights were snatched up almost immediately. Gloria Sanchez Productions, a sister company to Will Ferrell and Adam McKay's Gary Sanchez, got to work adapting it for the screen. In 2018, Pressler's wrote a story about high society grifter Anna Sorkin. That story is being adapted by Shonda Rhimes for the small screen, so keep an eye out. So how much of what we see on screen was present in Pressler's original story? For one, Destiny is not the name of the person in the article. Her real name is Rosalind Rosie Keough. While her name wasn't accurate, a lot about her life was. She really did get abandoned by her parents and was raised by her grandmother. In her adult life, she really did become a stripper to go back to school and take care of her family. She even met a real Ramona, who was a bit different, but more on that later, who did take her in and show her the ropes. As you are probably guessing, the criminal details are pretty close as well. She even had an Escalade, like her movie counterpart. Most everything about Rosie down to the line about how hurt people tend to hurt other people is lifted straight from the article. After the interview, she then claimed the entire story was fiction, despite the fact that multiple sources confirmed most of the story, and it was obviously truth. She still denied it. The article has sources from several people involved in the conspiracy, several victims, and the investigating officers. Rosie claimed to want to be able to be a motivational speaker like the Wolf of Wall Street's Jordan Belfort. There are probably better role models out there, but maybe not for hustlers. The real Ramona also had a lot of trouble with how the story movie was presented. Her real name is Samantha Barbash for one. Funnily enough, her main complaint about the movie has nothing to do with her drugging and robbing people. No, she's upset that the movie portrayed her as a stripper. She's even claimed that she never stripped, despite a lot of proof she had. Still, she maintains that her and Rosie were savvy businesswomen like Jordan Belford. Again, why is he the patron saint of New York hustlers? While the film does portray the pair as strippers initially, it keeps true to the article by steering them towards management. The two are clearly ringleaders of the organization and not strippers any longer by the end. Still, her complaints are so deep that she plans on suing Lopez and the studio over defamation of character. Pressler still stands by her work despite this. She corroborated everything through multiple indictments and interviews. The fact that both of them are writing their own books obviously has nothing to do with them recounting their stories. You'd think getting played by Jennifer Lopez would be enough, but apparently not. So how much of the crime in question was true? Surely the movie glamorized and exaggerated these crimes, right? Actually, it turns out the movie was spot on. Both of them really did engage in a criminal enterprise drugging and robbing Wall Street guys. They apparently netted upwards of $100,000 a night. 
Even the part where the guy injures his head was based on a real story. When truth is stranger than fiction, why make things up? Obviously, the fact that we are talking about the real-life story behind these hustles means they were caught. The story of their arrest was pretty close to the real thing as well. The police evidently received a lot of complaints about getting taken for a ride at strip clubs. Almost all of these are fraudulent, so cops rarely take them seriously. Much like the movie, though, one man managed to convince them. Still, they had very little to go on, as so few men would back him up. It seems as though Destiny slash Rosie was right in her assumption that if they'd cooled off for a bit, they would have been fine. Once the investigation honed in on the girls, though, the arrests went just like they did in the movie. Aside from the part where Lily Reinhardt's character throws up all the time, Destiny slash Rosie and Ramona slash Samantha both pointed each other out as the ringleader, just like in the film as well. Rosie ended up taking the deal, and then both ended up taking the interview with Pressler, who actually looks a lot like Julia Stiles. The rest is history. It may be sad that they got caught, but there wouldn't be any story if they didn't. No one admits to this kind of crime if they got away with it, right? The real-life ladies who inspired the movie may be fascinating, but they aren't the other real-life hustlers associated with the film. You may not know this, but musician Cardi B shares quite a lot with characters like Ramona and Destiny. Like both of them, Cardi B got her start working as a stripper to escape poverty. She also used the money to go back to school just like Destiny did. That's far from where the comparison ends, though. Cardi also admitted to drugging and robbing clients regularly in a similar way to how Ramona did it. Just like her, she claimed to be doing it to survive. Her casting was no accident, either. Scafaria evidently chased Cardi for years trying to get her in the film. The character of Diamond doesn't have an equivalent in the original article, so she's likely based on the artist's experience. The big difference is that Cardi men to turn that criminal activity into a successful music career. Now she's a Grammy winner, who is one of the most famous women in the world. Ramona and Destiny may be famous hustlers, but they've got nothing on Cardi B. It's hard to imagine now, but at one point, Hustlers wasn't considered to be a surefire hit. Annapurna Pictures picked the film up in 2016, but dropped it quite suddenly. The team was in a panic until STX gladly stepped in. It was good for them that they did, because the film is now their most successful venture. Leaning on the star power of crazy rich Asians Constance Wu and Jennifer Lopez, the film pulled in over $33 million. This proved a number of things. Number one, a large portion of the ticket-buying audience for the movie was ladies. The crime film with no romantic subplot being a winner for female moviegoers balks at long-established studio norms. It also continues the trend of films featuring a more diverse cast scoring big numbers. So if you liked Hustlers, be ready, because there are probably going to be more films like it very soon. There you have it, the real story behind Hustlers. Which part of the movie or the story behind it is your favorite? What do you believe? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe.